Coming up, a moment in Pocono Mountains history. The Great Pocono Frog Rush started in the late 1890s. Areas known as Frog Town, Frog Valley, Frog Glen, Frog Lake, and Frog Pond sprung up around the Commonwealth. From 1890 to around 1910, local Pocono Mountain newspapers carried stories about the frog culture or frog farming and the money that could be made by raising these slippery little hoppers and selling them to hotels and restaurants in Chicago and New York City. A dozen large frog legs would sell for about $5 in the 1800s, which would be equivalent to $143 today. Frog farming was considered a wealth-generating business, with successful ventures providing $50,000 a year in profit, or an equivalent of $1,669,705 today, according to officialdata.org. The possibility of these profits are what fueled the Great Pocono Frog Rush. The lucrative business, imitating its counterparts in France, started in the United States due to the popularity of French cuisine in the larger metro areas across America. Entrepreneurs were reported to have started frog farms in the Pocono Mountains. All you needed to get started were large bullfrogs and land with a stream to feed several Finston ponds for them to live in. The process for raising frogs was fairly straightforward. A frog farmer maintained a number of full-grown frogs for breeding stock and fed them pieces of beef liver every two weeks by hand using a stick with a short string attached to it. If you didn't feed them, the full-grown frogs would eat the smaller frogs. After the frogs lay their eggs, thousands of tadpoles hatch and grow in the ponds. Once the frogs are large enough, they are caught at night using a lantern and packed alive in crates or barrels and shipped to hotels and restaurants. Raising frogs in the Poconos wasn't an easy task. Frog farmers had to fence in the property to prevent the frogs from leaving, as well as to keep predators from getting in. Snakes and other animals relied on frogs as a major part of their diet. There were so many rattlesnakes in the Pocono Mountains that bounties were paid for each one killed and the local papers carried stories of heroic battles between man and monster rattlers. Birds of prey, such as eagles and hawks, also feasted on frogs and farms became an easy source of food for these winged predators. Restaurants like Delmonico's in New York City featured frog legs on the menu. The preferred dish was often a frog legs provincial or grilled frog saddle. Frog legs were also featured at better hotels during their holiday meals. The demand for frogs as food became so great that Pennsylvania had to establish a bullfrog hunting season that ran from July 1st to November 1st each year. Several large bullfrogs were caught every year. The largest bullfrog caught in northeastern Pennsylvania was by Wilkes-Barre and was rumored to weigh seven and a half pounds. It was predicted at the time that frog legs would become as popular as chicken and found in every market across the country. In the early 1900s, the Pennsylvania Department of Fisheries offered more than 300,000 young bullies to farmers throughout the state for stocking of ponds, lakes, and streams. In the late 1890s, frogs were the inspiration for everything from music to art to a number of activities, including races for the fastest frog, contests for the highest jumping frog, and many other events. One of the yearly events held at the Hotel Faucher in Milford was a game of great skill called the Frog Championship. It involved a metal frog perched on a trunk with contestants throwing small metal discs representing flies into its mouth from a distance of 30 feet. The best players could land hundreds of flies in the frog's mouth. In 1905, Pennsylvania received national attention for its innovation in frog culture and was considered one of the nation's pioneers in the field. It was also noted that the demand worldwide exceeded the supply of frogs raised on these small farms. Frogs were also in high demand for scientific research, dissection, and as weather forecasters. To predict the weather, 
A frog was placed in a half-filled jar of water with a frog ladder in it. Depending on where the frog would sit on the ladder determined the coming weather. Local papers also carried numbers of stories about frogs found in coal mines deep underground in the area. It was rumored that frogs were freed from lumps of coal, stones, frozen blocks of ice, and other substances often coming back to life. In 1907, due to overfishing, Pennsylvania had to change the fish laws to protect certain species of fish by prohibiting the sale of bass, pickerel, perch under a certain size, and brook trout. Using poison or dynamite for fishing was also made illegal. In the following years, laws were enacted and changed to prevent fish, turtles, and frogs from being overharvested and vanishing from the waters of the Commonwealth. And the great Pocono frog rush faded from the pages of the local newspapers. <laughs>